Welcome to the Roy Morgan Weekly Update. It's now been over two months since the federal election on May 21, and today finally marks the first sitting of the new parliament. If we turn now then to the key weekly indicators, the latest Roy Morgan poll shows ALP support at its highest since the federal election. The ALP is up one percentage point to 56%. That gives it a large lead over the coalition on 44%. That's down one percentage point on a two party preferred basis, obviously. Now, ALP support's gone from strength to strength in recent weeks as the energy crisis along Australia's east coast has abated and average petrol prices have fallen by around 20 cents per litre over the last couple of weeks. These two things appear to have been our most top of mind concerns and they seem to have abated. Now, despite the improving fortunes for the Albanese government in terms of voting intention, there's increasing concern about the direction the country is going. Now, only 42% of Australians say the country's going in the right direction. That's down two and a half points on last week. And 39%, up 2%, say that it's going in the wrong direction. This means the latest government confidence rating is down by 4.5 points. To 103. Of course, at 103, it's still in positive territory above that neutral level of 100. In better news for the government, there was a slight improvement to the latest ANZ Roy Morgan Consumer Confidence Rating, up by 0.6 points to 82.4, obviously still well below 100. But in essence, what we're seeing in all of this data is that people are feeling okay about themselves and their families and their prospects for next year, but they're not seeing such a rosy future for Australia, either in the short term or the medium term. Now, as we head towards next week's RBA meeting on the first Tuesday in August, when they tell us whether they're going to increase interest rates or not, the key indicator to watch is inflation expectations. The measure increased by 0.2 percentage points to 6% this week. So that means Australians expect an average level of 6% per annum inflation over the next two years. Now, inflation expectations have been consistently around this level for several weeks now, averaging 5.9% over the last six weeks since about mid-June. Now, there are several important ABS releases over the next few days that will also heavily influence the Reserve Bank's decision next week about interest rates. Tomorrow, the ABS releases its quarterly CPI for the June quarter. The official inflation figure released by the ABS is widely expected to release a figure of between 6 and 6.5%. That would be the highest for over 30 years and very much in line with what Australians expect according to Roy Morgan's inflation expectations. On Thursday, the ABS releases the latest retail sales data for the month of June. Now, ABS retail sales have remained strong during the last few months, with May retail sales up 10.4% compared to May last year, and we're expecting another strong sales month. This strong growth in sales is a crucial reminder that people are still spending. This is providing support to the economy, and it's a big part of the reason the Reserve Bank feels comfortable raising interest rates despite many of the other concerns. One of the many drivers, and there are many drivers driving this surge in retail spending, but one of the many drivers is the growth of buy now, pay later services over the last few years. And Roy Morgan continuously surveys consumers about lots of things, but particularly about their buying behavior and intentions, what they're buying and how they're paying for those purchases. As this chart shows, over 80% of Australians, that's 17 and a half million, are now aware of buy now, pay later services like Afterpay, Zip, Latitude Pay, Hum, OpenPay, and now Klarna. This chart shows the COVID-19 pandemic had no impact on growing awareness of these services. Essentially, it just kept growing. And nearly one in five Australians used a buy now, pay later service in the year to June 2022. So 19% of us actually used one of these services. That's nearly double the rate at the start of the pandemic in early 2020, 
when only 11% were using the services. So as Australians were locked down, unable to travel or spend our money on travelling, many turned to retail therapy. That includes those using government stimulus money to spend on new clothes, electronics or any other consumer goods. But now only one in four Australians say now is a good time to buy. 46%, almost half of us, say it's a bad time to buy. Finally, sport. The annual AFL supporter ladder shows the Sydney Swans on top once again with over 1.1 million supporters. And in the AFL's heartland, that's Victoria, Collingwood is the most widely supported club with 735,000 supporters ahead of Essendon on 694,000. The large support for the Sydney Swans shows the benefit of having a monopoly position in a large market for so long. The Swans are now top the annual supporter ladder for nearly 20 years straight. And that's pretty much a wrap for this week. Thank you for listening and I look forward to joining you next week when we'll have the latest data on consumer confidence, inflation expectations and voting intention. Finally, just let me say, as we said last week, the new federal government doesn't have an easy job. In front of it are many, many challenges, but it does have the support of the people. And this will be incredibly important as there are difficult and unpopular decisions already needing to be made. Take care. See you next week.